Hey friends, Kelly England here. I just thought I would come to you with my Tuesday tip. Uh, and this one comes straight from my reality this week. Uh, I had the bomb listing, which was amazing. It had all the bells and whistles, the beautiful LVP floors, the beautiful granite countertops, the vaulted ceilings, the screen and porch, the fenced backyard. It was just amazing. It had a sexy shower in it. Oh, I cannot, I could go on and on about this house. But anyway, um, and people saw it. I mean, buyers were all over it. Within 20 minutes, we had our first showing. Um, the first day we had six offers. The next day we had three more offers. It was amazing. In fact, by five o'clock, what was it? We're like, we're shutting this down. The, the seller needs to come home at some point. <laughs> But there was one offer in particular that was really good. And I mean, it was so good that this buyer wanted it um, about $15,000 over asking price. And I knew that my sellers were going to go, ah, that's the one. <laughs> we're going to Disney after closing. But, um, you know, I needed to know a little bit more about it. So I sent them all the offers. I said, look through these. Let me make a few phone calls. Let me call you back. Uh, so I called that agent that sent the bomb offer and said, you know, really love your offer. It's amazing. I can't wait to work with you on this if your clients are sitting on a pile of money. And she said, what do you mean, Kelly? And I said, well, um, y'all killed it on this offer. I mean, you're about 8,000 above where everybody else even came in who were also above asking price. Um, but you're asking for closing costs and that concerns me. So are you people sitting on a pile of money to make up the difference from what you offered to what it might appraise if it were to come in short? And she said, Kelly, you don't think it would appraise? <laughs> I said, well, if I thought it would appraise for that, I would have listed it at that. So I need to know if you guys are going to be able to come and play to the bidder in. I said, because I don't want to set anybody up for wrong expectations or this to fail, not for your buyer and certainly not for my seller. And she said, well, I hear what you're saying. Let me go ask. And I said, that's wonderful. Um, can you also ask them if they wouldn't be willing to sign an addendum that says just that, that regardless of the appraisal, they will make up the difference. And she said, okay. So I went back to my clients and I called them and I said, let's talk about these offers. And of course they were like, we want that one. <laughs> and I was like, I know, I know. S simmer down, calm down, calm down, simmer down. Let's talk about this. And we went over all the offers, which there were really great offers. And when you did the math, when you did the math, yeah, that one was still high up there. But the next three were right around each other and they, I wouldn't say, I mean, they were above asking price, but if, let's think about it, if that one that was Mac Daddy way up there, if it didn't appraise, say it appraised much less, closer to where the other ones were, and then they still needed their closing cost, it was actually not going to be the best offer if I didn't get that guarantee from them to pay the difference. And my clients listened to me and they heard me and they said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. You're right, Kelly. We will go with that offer if they do the guarantee, but if not, we're going to go with offer number one. And I was like, well, all right. I like it. People of reason. You see it. They were still, there's either way, they were still going to get more than their asking price, which was amazing. But we needed to have a come to Jesus moment on it. So I would like to say that when the agent called me back, they were like, yes, Kelly, we will pay it. No problem. Let's move out. Unfortunately, they didn't have any more money to spend. They didn't. That's why they needed those closing costs. And they were relying on that appraisal to make up the difference in order to be the best offer out there for that seller. However, my seller would have paid the price and I couldn't in consciousness or, you know, ethically <laughs> do that. So I had to come back to them and tell them, I'm sorry, there is no extra money.
and they weighed it and they hemmed and hawed on it for just a split second, not even that long. And then they said, Kelly, you're right. We need to go with the one that's, you know, more of a guarantee offer number one. And we did. And man, I hurt some people's feelings that day, but nobody was mad. They all understood, but none more so than my seller. She and he understood that I was setting an expectation for them that was going to create hopefully success and not a lot of doubt. I didn't want to set an expectation for them that 30 days later would have failed, not only for my seller, but for the buyer. The buyer would have been out the home inspection fee, their earnest money and appraisal money. That would have been probably close to $1,500, if not 2000. The seller would have been off the market for 15, 20, maybe 30 days, lost all of those original buyers that were willing to offer more than asking price and now have to go back on the market. And time is money. So please, buyers agents, listing agents, buyers, sellers, please look and review all of the offers. Look at, is the biggest offer the best offer if the contingencies don't line up? There is always what ifs in real estate, but try to combat them early on and come to an understanding so you are not surprised later. It is very important that as agents, we look out for you, not only your mental well-being because it's stressful to buy and sell real estate, but also financially. It's very important to us to make sure that we either save you money or get you top dollar and meet your expectations. That's our job. So don't let the big bling offer totally outshine or cloud over good judgment uh, because we want you to successfully close.